Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, I'm sorry I haven't done a video in a little while. I've needed a little bit of a creative recharge, if you will. But I was talking to Chris the other day, and he is going to be covering Steve Buchanan. In fact, by the time you're watching this, he already has covered Steve Buchanan. But if you didn't hear his podcast, I'll list it in the description. Um, Steve Buchanan was one of the individuals that was caught in the 2016 sting. Steve is actually a pretty young guy compared to most of the other predators that you see, like, that have been in the 2006 stings. Now, before we go further, let me just play you a short clip of Buchanan so that can refresh your memory if you don't remember who this guy is. 27-year-old Army vet Stephen Buchanan has a date tonight with who he thinks is a 13-year-old girl. I was, honestly, I was just gonna take her out and show her around. Take her out and show her around where? Fairfield. Okay. When my cousin came. Right. She did the same thing. You, when your cousin came, she did the same thing. What do you mean? What is this? An older person. An older person came around. over and yeah. showed your 13 year old around town. And what happened in that case? She got assaulted. She got assaulted. And I was in the army. And I would, I don't like people doing that. So what is all this talk back and forth between you and a girl you think is 13? You know you're going to shower with me Thursday night. What night is this? I'm going to pick you up and put you against the shower wall. Then I'm going to have you ride me, babe, as my hand grabs your ass and I blank your blanks. Did you send her any pictures of yourself? Then you talk about actually having sex with her and Skyping it to an ex-boyfriend. All right, I think that's enough of that. You get the general gist of it. He was going for an underage girl. He plays the role of oh, I was just going to show her around, even though this happened to my cousin or sister or whatever it was, but I was just going to show her around, it didn't mean anything, Chris brings out the chat, and it's all done from there. All right, so why don't we throw the sex offender registry page up on the screen. You can see that he's 33 years old, date of birth 9-12-88, white male, brown hair, 5'10", 172 pounds, eyes blue. Now there is an address on here, but I will go ahead and blur that because this is not even his house. It's actually his parents' house. So he lives with- Who lives here? Who lives here? Oh, I live here. Me, my mommy, and my daddy. Me, my mommy, and my daddy. Me, my mommy, and my daddy. Now we can see the offenses here, sexual assault, second of a minor. Risk or injury to a minor involving contact with the intimate parts of someone under 16. I don't usually see it written like that, but okay. We have enticing someone under the age of 16 through interactive computer use. I'm not 100% sure, but that could have been when he sent pictures of his intimate parts to the minor through the computer. So that's really all there is with the sex offender registry. There's not any work information for some reason. I guess I don't remember if Connecticut actually places work information or the work address on the registry or not. But that's all there is with that. I did some research on the house. Like I said, his mother and father do own the property. And here's a picture of it. This is a 2015 picture. Uh, so I don't think that Christmas decorations are out there 24 seven. So there's really nothing else there. I haven't done a FOIA request on him that might bring in some charges that didn't lead to arrests or some criminal complaints or something like that. But as for our actual convictions, that's the only thing there. Then I went over to Indeed and did a resume search, and I found that he's actually looking for work. This resume right here, I am going to knock out some of the information. Uh, I don't really want to, but I think we've seen in the past that some TCAP fans uh, can't really control themselves, and they go and leave negative reviews for the business and send the employer harassing messages and you know i'm sure you can find the information for yourself but i don't really want to be a party to that so we're going to start at the end of this resume and work our way to the most recent employment but it should be noted that he updated his resume just last month so it does look like he's actively looking for work so we'll actually start with the groups here we have usaa january 18 to present veterans of foreign wars present and those are just groups right there the certification and licenses, we have Class B CDL, TWIC card, tank slash hazmat endorsement, OSHA 10 electrical. So it looks like he's currently certified in all of those things, although I did not double check that information. We have some awards here, military awards, Army Commendation Medal, Army Good Conduct Medal, 
National Defense Service Medal, Iraq Campaign Medal with Campaign Star, Army Service Ribbon, Overseas Service Ribbon, Driver and Mechanic Badge with Mechanical Class, Military Service, United States Army, Rank Specialist. Okay, so I'll put his skills here on screen. I'm not going to read through all of them. I mean, we have the certifications out of the way, so... So it looks like he has a Class B Commercial Driver's License that expires September 2022. So we have Education Certificate in Electrical, Lincoln Tech, Shelton, Connecticut. Certificate in Class B CDL Commercial Driver's License. That's Allstate Commercial Driver Training School, Seymour, Connecticut, October 2017 through November 2017. Now, as for the employments, we have him working as an installer. That's in Norwalk, Connecticut, September 2007 to May 2009. And don't forget, the Sting was in 2000, I was going to say 2016, but I think it was actually late 2015, it said. But So this was all pre-Sting employments. Supervisor in the U.S. Army. This was in Fort Hood, Texas, May 2009 to December 2012. This was the job he had when he got in trouble at the Sting, and then obviously he lost that job. But maintenance mechanic, Bridgeport, Connecticut, January 2014 through October 2015. And yeah, it was actually October 2015 that he got in trouble, so obviously they're not going to allow him to keep that job. So he was in jail for three years, and he got a suspended sentence, and he's on probation for 10. So right now, he is still on probation, but he got three years, and then when he got out of jail, then he started working for a company in Connecticut, and he's working as a dump truck driver. And the description on that one is deliver loads of different material depending on job that day, experience with milling, paving, and chip sealing. So yeah, December 2018 to present, at least per this resume I'm looking at, he works as a dump truck driver. And don't get me wrong, I'm not berating that at all. Uh, just that that's what he's doing right now. And apparently he is looking for new work. I don't know, how far is Bridgeport to uh, Cornfield? Perhaps he can be digging some dirt with Lauren Armstrong. Although from what I hear, Lauren no longer has that job. So I don't know, maybe they can stay in touch if it doesn't violate their probation and work together, they would have something in common. I don't know, I'm trying to be positive. I'm trying to think of options here. Anyway, with that, I think I'll end the video here. It really looks like he hasn't got in trouble at all. He seems to be doing good. Like I said, he is living with his parents right now in Connecticut. He is working, he's looking for new employment. Obviously, he's gonna be at a disadvantage having the record that he has, but you know, maybe he'll find something. So once again, I will link uh, Chris's podcast in the description. I suggest you check that out if you haven't already. I hope everyone has a fantastic rest of the day and just remember to verify everything. Okay, go step by step, okay? Okay? Can you hear me? So you don't have to make a decision now, but just start thinking about it, okay? All right? All right? <laughs>